Good morning, everyone. We can have everybody take their seats. We will get started here in just a moment. We'll start with a quick round of introductions so that everybody knows who everybody else in the room is. Um, and if you have not signed in um, on the sheet so that we can get your name down and where you're from for the minutes. Um, please remember to get signed in. Oh, I see. My name is J.P. Crowley. I am the chairman of the Montana Board of Housing, and I live here in Helena. Greg Gould, board counsel from Helena. Pat Melby, board member from Helena. Sheila and Rice, board member from Great Falls. Jeanette McKee, board member Hamilton. Bob Gochi, board member from the beautiful Flathead Valley. <laughs> Stacy Collette, executive operations manager for the Board of Housing. Ashley Amato, Montana Board of Housing. Lake Aurelia, Montana Board of Housing. Ms. Gordon. Leah Couch, supporting Livingston and Park County. Clint Tinsley, Park County Commissioner. Oh. <coughs> no, I'm in Wolf Point. Park County. Lawson Mormon, Park County Planner. Heather Trevor-Kinan, Director of Human Services for Park County Health Department. Oh, yeah. Katie Weaver, MSU Park County Extension. Well, it has been voted on or talked about to do it. Uh, Steve Caldwell, Park County Commissioner. Good morning, Chancey Kitson, Blackfeet Housing. Yeah. Trent Rogers, Travoy. It's uh, Tom Manshrek from Thomas Development. Ravonda Stordahl, Beautiful Affordable Housing. Okay. Bruce Houle. Town Council in uh, Culbertson, uh, Montana, and a Chamber President as well. Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, it, it was, uh, Echo Enterprises in Helena. Really? I'm, I'm the mayor of, of uh, a Wolf Point, Chris Deshock. Rena Oliphant, Montana Board of Housing. Jeff Kinkler from Lewistown. Nikki Phillips, Meadows Apartment, Lewistown. Heather Grenier, HRDC, Bozeman. Michael Watchdalak, Park County Board of Realtors President. Gary Von Lundern, Meadows Resident. Jerry Feller, the Meadows of Lewistown. Kent Mortimer from Tees and Tally with Meadows. Heather McMillan, uh, Housing Director, Homeward. Andrea Davis, Homeward. Kyle Robert, City of Polson. Uh, Mark Shrive, City Manager in Polson. Alex Burkhalter, Housing Solutions. Ryan Culver, Montana Board of Housing. Gene Luer, GL Development. 
Hello, I'm Don Sturhan, President of Mountain Plains Equity Group, and we're a tax credit syndicator that's based in Billings, Montana. Logan Anderson, Mountain Plains Equity Group. Shane Walk, Mountain Plains Equity Group. Mary Lee Olson, CEO of YWCA Billings, and we're the Gateway Vista Project. Good morning, John Phillips, YWCA Billings, Chief Financial Officer. Vicki Bauer, Montana Board of Housing. Charlie Brown, Montana Board of Housing. Brian Lundeen, Board, Montana Board of Housing. Ginger Fancook, Montana Board of Housing. You see cool. Neil Fortier, NeighborWorks, Great Falls. Steve Demick, GMD Development. Greg Dunfield, uh, GMD Development, co-applicant on Rockcrest Commons. Mary Palkovich, Montana Board of Housing. <laughs> Todd Jackson, Montana Board of Housing. Paula Loving, Montana Board of Housing. Penny Cope, Montana Board of Housing. Welcome, everyone. For those folks that are on the phone, if you would be sure to hit star two to mute your phone so that we don't hear uh, background sounds and phone calls that you don't want us to hear. And then if we have people on the phone, um, again, star two to mute or unmute. And if you could just introduce yourself, that would be great. Okay, John I'm Wagner. The, go ahead. With the Great Falls Chamber. John Wagner with QTAC Rock Bond Council to the board. <coughs> Nina Chu with the RBC. Patrick Singh with RBC. Bren Lowe, CEO of Livingston Healthcare. Brianna Vine, Great Northern Development Corporation. Joe Easton, Jackson Contract Group. Eileen Picars, RCAC. Thank you, everyone. As we get started, um, are there, is there any public comment on items that are not on today's agenda? Okay, we'll move on to the minutes from last month. Um, <clears throat> I move to approve the webinar minutes. Second. Is there any discussion on on the motion to approve last month's minutes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. The minutes are approved from last month. And we will start with the multifamily program. Mr. Chair, I'd like to declare that I have a conflict of interest here and I'll leave the table. Thank you. How's that? All right, good morning. So I'm just gonna walk you through real quick. Um, Mary and I went earlier this year and did a tour of all of the project sites. So I'm just gonna give you kind of a quick little uh, rundown of those and then we have some photos for you to take a look at. The first one is Roosevelt Villas, Yellowstone Villas. Uh, it's a, in two locations. The first one's in Wolf Point. They're both acquisition rehab. Each uh, property has eight units, and it's a family property. The second location is in Culbertson, and it is also acquisition rehab family. The next project is Polson Landing. It is in Polson, 
new construction will consist of 35 units and is also a family property. The next project is Aspen Place 3, located in Butte. New construction consists of 32 units and is also family. Gateway Vista in Billings is new construction, 24 units, and is also family. Blackfeet Home 6 in Browning, new construction, 30 single family homes, and is family. The next is the Livingston Memorial Hospital. It's located in Livingston. It's acquisition, new construction, 35 units, and will be family. Next is the Meadows in Lewistown. It is acquisition rehab, 35 units, and it is elderly. And last, we have Rockcrest. It is located in Great Falls, new construction. The 9% will be 43 units, it's family, and the combined project will consist of 124 units. Thank you. So as Mary begins to introduce each of the applications for this year's tax credits, um, we'll have each um, project um, do public comment if you have comments on that individual project or um, developers if you want to give us kind of a, a very quick overview. Uh, we've already gone through all of the um, presentations on the, every project and I think of the board we after looking through multiple months of <laughs> papers here I think we're pretty well versed on everybody's project and so um, if, if you'd like just when it gets time for your project give us a quick overview and um, any public comment will be taken at that time Okay, board members. <clears throat> it's easier for me this way. Uh, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, the first one is um, Roosevelt Villas. It's a family project in Culbertson and Wolf Point. Is acquisition rehab and is 16 units. Do we have public comment on that project? If you would come up to the podium here. And Todd will help you with microphone adjustments and stuff if need be. Good morning, everyone, to the board and the chairman, Mr. Crowley. I want to thank you on behalf of this opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the funding request in front of your committee today from the GL development firm. My name is Bruce Houle. I have been a council, Culbertson Town Council member for 20 years, and I have served as our chamber president for 18 years. I am here today to show support for the Yellowstone Villa apartment project. I fully re recommend GL Development's request for Montana Board of Housing funding. Back in January of 1981, I became a loan officer at the Culbertson State Bank. I was asked by the bank directors to clean up the lot that this apartment now sits on. The property I cleaned up was a closed lumber yard and I did clean it up. In the fall of 1981 I met with Yellowstone Villa representative and an agreement was made to sell them the 100-foot lot that the building now sits on. 
These folks wanted to build an eight unit apartment building for low income residents. The owners of the bank agreed that their apartment project was just what our town needed. The Yellowstone Villas in Culbertson sit on one of the best lots in town. This apartment is in the center of the town, very easy for residents to walk to the bank, walk to the drugstore, the hardware store, the grocery store, the library, and to the school. I have owned the lot next to the Yellowstone Villas for eight for 30 years. I have watched people move in and out of the apartment building. The Yellowstone Villa apartments have been operated by a great firm for over 30 years. They have always taken care of their building, their grounds, and their residents. This apartment building has provided a safe place for residents to live. Without this low-income housing unit in our town, many of those families would not have lived in our town. The town of Culbertson fully supports this funding request. On behalf of the, all of our Culbertson Chamber members, we recommend GL Development's funding request be granted. And I thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Chris DeShock. I'm the mayor of Wolf Point. Um, someone asked me once, why is it important that, that Wolf Point has this? Why is it important that, that I travel a thousand miles round trip in order to, to speak in, in, in front of you? And um, I, I go back from when I was a child. One of my friends actually grew up in the Yellowstone Villas, not knowing when I was 12, 11 years old, um, what exactly it meant to be low income. Nobody at 12 knows what it is to be low income. Um, it, is, it is wonderful to say that that childhood friend went through the military, um, became a Marine, is now a very successful member of society. And I put that directly on the fact that we have these projects. Um, 40 years ago, this, this project was made, or 38 years ago, this project was made. It is, it is a need of, of rehab, it is a need to, to have stuff done with it. Um, Wolf Point and, and in um, eastern Montana, we don't see a lot of projects. Uh, most of them, as, as we can see by most of the projects, are nothing against you guys at all. Um, but they happen in the, in the larger areas. Um, we need this. Our, our town cannot function without projects like this, without the affordable housing like this that the, the board offers. We don't have the opportunity for larger corporations coming in um, and, and building housing projects for us. We, we just don't, we don't have that right now. And I don't think we ever will. That's why it is, a, in, in my opinion, um, important that, that the state um, helps us as, as much as, as they can. Um, it, is, it is funded and as, as you can look in this handout, I, 30 letters of support just from the town itself. Um, we need this, I, I, would, I would urge, um, the um, board to recommend this. Um, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, I'm Gene Luer. I've proposed the project. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on it. I won't take any of your time. I think the project is um, I know the credit pricing is an issue. I think this project was priced pretty close to where it should be, although your uh, motions to be considered, I think, makes some sense given the market. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there anybody on the phone that has public comment on the Roosevelt Villas? Okay, thank you. Anyone else for Roosevelt Villas? Mary? Okay, uh, next is Polson Landing. In Polson, um, <clears throat> it is a family project and 35 units.
Good morning, board members. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to address you for a second time regarding the Polson Landing Project application submitted by Alex Burkhalter of Housing Solutions. I'm Mark Shrives, the city manager for the city of Polson. Although this project was not awarded any funding last year, I appreciate Alex's tenacity to not give up on what is an excellent project for the city of Polson. The Polson City Commission has asked me to be present today and to offer the city support for a very much needed project in the city of Polson. I remember Alex's first appearance in front of the city commission over 18 months ago. His initial presentation to the city commission resulted in his first application and my appearance before you last year. Due to his perseverance, I'm here again today. I know it's a very competitive process, and for him to have his application once again chosen is a tremendous feather in his cap for the quality application he has submitted, not once, but now twice. Why is this project important for the city of Polson? Over the last three to four years, Polson has seen a tremendous increase in commercial property development, particularly on the south end of the city in an area known as the Ridgewater Development and on other properties in surround, surrounding the area. Starting with the expansion of the Walmart store into a super Walmart, we've also seen the addition of an auto zone, O'Reilly's Auto Parts, a new Red Lion Hotel, McKinsey River Bar and Grill, expansion of Valley Glass, the opening of Taco Bell, Walgreens, Murdoch's, and several other retail businesses that are either under construction or planned. In addition, Kalispell Regional Hospital and St. Luke's Hospital have both opened new medical clinics. And as we speak, one new dialysis center has opened and a second one will be opening soon. Polson has definitely become a regional hub in our area of the state. The property uh, Housing Solutions has proposed for their project is also an excellent area for young families. Within a short walk is a new aquatic facility, four new soccer fields, a new gymnastics facility, and within two years we expect to see an enclosed ice rink and hockey facility. With all of this new commercial development comes the need to house the new workers and their families. Understanding the wages that are paid in many of the service type industries, Housing Solutions proposal for affordable housing and the opportunity provided by your board could not have come at a better time for the city of Polson. Speaking as a representative for the Polson City Commission, we strongly support this project and highly recommend that the Polson Landing Project be one of your selections to move forward for funding. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good morning, board members. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you regarding the Polson Landing Project submitted by Alex Burkhalter of Housing Solutions. I'm Kyle Roberts. I'm the city planner for the city of Polson. You may recall I was here last August to speak in favor of Alex's project and was very pleased to learn that day that his application was invited to proceed to this final round. And that's why I'm here again today to speak in favor of the Polson Landing Project. Now you just heard from Mark as to why this project is so important to the city of Polson, but what I'd like to briefly mention are three points. First, speaking from a long-range planning perspective, I'd like to share with you that the city of Polson just adopted a new growth policy two months ago. This policy discusses the community's great need for affordable housing and in fact encouraging affordable housing is one of the development goals of the policy. Housing Solutions 35 unit Pulse and Landing affordable housing project would directly address this policy goal. The second thing I'd like to mention is the demonstrated need for affordable housing as evidenced by the June 2016 mini market housing survey of affordable housing and Polson that was submitted with the Polson landing application. The study couldn't be any more revealing of Polson's great need for affordable housing. The study found that that of the four low income restricted housing complexes in Polson, all four complexes were 100% occupied and each one of them included in waiting list. To verify, I personally made phone calls to six low income housing complexes, including the four listed in the survey to verify that these numbers um, from this mini market survey were correct and indeed my phone calls did reveal that each one was correct as far as the numbers. Lastly, I just want to highlight that the mini market housing survey found that the greatest need in Polson would be for units at 
40 to 49 percent area medium income. And this is precisely the demographic that the Pulse and Landing project would serve. So given the results of the market study and what our growth policy says, the Pulse and Landing project makes great sense. And if awarded, it would be housing tax credits well invested in fulfilling a tre this tremendous need in the community. So thank you again for considering Pulse and Landing in the final review. And thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I too will make it brief. Um, I guess I'd first like to say thanks to the staff. We had this um, LOI procedure this year to try and reduce their workload so they didn't have to underwrite so many projects. And then tax credit pricing went wild and they had to underwrite them all twice or three times. So we gave it a try. But anyway, um, specific and speaking to that pricing issue, um, I would encourage you guys to accept uh, the staff's recommendation on the on the 10% increase. We've looked at the numbers on Polson, and um, even with the pricing changes, the deal works. It's ready to go. Um, you know, we can be more sure of that now than at application and at LOI when we're looking at you know breaking ground in three or four months. So if you guys had any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any any additional public comment on Polson Landing? Okay, um, we next have Aspen 3, Aspen Place 3 in Butte. It's a family project and is 32 units. Morning, board members, staff, and audience. Uh, Tom Manshrek, Thomas Development, co-developer with Rivonda Stordahl, Public Housing Authority of Butte. Once again, you folks have a tough job. Strong market studies, low vacancies in almost all properties, uh, strong letters of support, and folks uh, here to testify for the need for housing in, in many parts of Montana. Uh, I want to just uh, discuss two things very quickly. One is credit pricing and um, it's very clear that credit pricing is, is in flux right now. Fortunately, uh, the uh, volume that we're able to do in uh, Idaho and some other states is we've uh, ended up with a couple of relationships for with uh, equity providers who will uh, stay the course with us much as they did back in the 2006, 2007, 2008 era. Uh, and uh, while I don't know that we're going to hold our dollar pricing in the application, I think, will be maybe mid 90s, something like that. Even if we take the 10% haircut that Mary and Kelly have uh, proposed, that's about a $500,000 number. We have the ability to apply for an FHLB, HHP application, uh, Montana Department of Commerce, which uh, thankfully provided a million five to both acquire and renovate Aspen Place One and Aspen Place Two which uh, renovation is complete and went very, very well. Uh, and we're quite confident that Aspen Place 3 will uh, lease up very, very quickly as well. Um, last year, and indeed at the August meeting, I made uh, mention of the, the sort of imbalance in, supply, in uh, credit allocation, either on a county basis or a region basis. And I see that staff has uh, included some data uh, that supports or does an analysis rather not only of all counties but all regions and there are 10 regions in the state of Montana uh, analyzed uh, four of those three of those regions are underserved uh, relative to credits awarded versus population um, and of the in the five the, of those five that are underserved region five which is Butte Silver Bow has the the most disparity between the 9% uh, credit housing produced and the population. So the numbers that we presented in our uh, our cover letter last year seem to be borne out very nicely by the empirical data that uh, staff provided. Um, 
the staff report shows a 1%, 1.3% vacancy. Uh, a careful review of the staff of the market study shows that vacancy in affordable product is zero. The 1.3% market rate units. Um, have any other questions? Be happy to answer them or introduce Rabanda. Thank you. So I'd like to take the time to thank all of you for um, considering our application. Um, I, there is a true need in Butte for more affordable housing. As Tom said, the vacancy rate for affordable housing is zero. Um, and, and we have so many people who want to apply for housing, we just don't have housing for them. So um, this would be a very important project for Butte and I think a great addition to the area where we're going to plan to build it would be just an extension of Aspen 1 and 2 and I think it's a great area. So thank you. Thank you. Two other, oh by the ways, uh, staff analysis of the uh, current pricing and staff's proposal in the both the analysis memo and the resolution is very, very good work and uh, would recommend the board seriously consider that. As we, as we, as this development team uh, look forward, should we be fortunate enough to fund and look at ways to fill the the gap? Uh, there are a couple of other opportunities. One of which is the uh, land pricing uh, contains a fifty thousand dollar credit from the seller uh, to purchaser. Uh, if uh, needed, have a little more room to to make all of the numbers work. There's uh, probably some room in uh, in that number. Thank you. Is there any other public comment on Aspen 3? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, I believe we have someone who has come in um, that would like to uh, give public comment on Pulse in place. Yes. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vermeer Taylor. I live in Wolf Point, Montana. I'm here to talk about the the low rent uh, apartment buildings. Hopefully, that we'll get in Wolf Point. There is a dire need for more housing, especially in northeastern Montana. We live in, <clears throat> live in an area where it's very isolated. We're way up in the northeastern part of the country, but we have many people there. What I do, and a friend of mine, Mary Cleveland, do is we manage a homeless shelter in Wolf Point for little or nothing. We feed these people out of our own pocket, so we know how important it is to have more housing, especially housing that people cannot find housing. With the Balkan coming into Williston, North Dakota, the rent has gone up from anywhere to 800 a month to over 2,000 a month for a small apartment and or a house, three or four bedroom house. It's very costly to live there. Everything else has gone up. The food, the cost of living went up dr drastically. So we know that even though some of us live on social security, we find it very hard to make it toward the end of the month because of the Bakken. Although Bakken, the Bakken isn't as active as, as it used to be, say, this past summer, the prices have not come down. So I implore that you think about and take, look into your heart that you do find the heart to give northeastern Montana the resources to build another apartment building. Several years ago, the reason I got into the homeless shelter was several years ago, we had, um, I think, like four to six people who froze to death because they had nowhere to sleep. They found a couple behind um, in an alley. They were in sleeping bags, but they were found early morning and they froze to death. And I don't want anybody else freezing. I don't care if, if I have to be there 12 hours or 24 hours a day, I'll be there because I cannot see another human being freezing to death because there is nowhere to sleep warm in a nice warm place. We try to give them uh, something to eat before they go to bed so that they will have something in their stomach and give them some hope that people like you all over this nation are doing what they can to provide what they can for people like them. 
Thank you. Thank you. Were there any others on um, Roosevelt Villa or Polson Landing that didn't get to speak? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, my name is Mary Cleland, 65 years old, and I'm dealing with the homeless shelter in Wolf Point. I'm from Poplar, Montana. Um, I recently moved back to Res. I've been gone for 42 years. I work in law. I'm a tribal court lay advocate. But what I've seen since I've been back there is that this is truly Fort Peck, Wolf Point, Poplar, the reservation, we have 75% unemployment. They say 65, but you know, 10 points ain't nothing when you're really economically disadvantaged. I call that true economic disadvantage. You're looking at an area where the people are truly economically disadvantaged. You're looking at an area that's underserved. Um, I know when the state looks like things, I don't work for you, but I suppose you're not looking at the Native American disadvantage that's going on in this white community. We are Indian and white, but the need is great up there. You have an underserved area. Um, I would implore you to look at helping these people, whether they're white or Native. They're still human beings, and they're still suffering. They're still underserved. They're still economically disadvantaged. There's a disparity of employment. You can only get employment usually was it seasonal. They're seasonal because it's primarily uh, farming and you can get a fall job or a summer job. But when the winter hits and it's uh, 30, 40 below, and nobody can work, not even roads, except for our snow plows. But I implore you to take a good look and open your hearts and minds to this, that there is a great need up there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we'll move on to Gateway Vista in Billings. It's a family project, 24 units. Good morning. I'm Mary Lee Olson, the CEO of YWCA Billings. I have to uh, appreciate and applaud the testimony given by the wonderful women representing Roosevelt Villas. In YWCA's seven county um, service area, we have both the Crow and the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservations, and therefore we have many similar needs for um, our project with people that are underserved and living in extreme poverty. And as I have shared before, our um, main purpose for our Y is, is uh, resolving problems with domestic and sexual violence. Many of the people who come to us for assistance are from those two counties with those two Indian reservations. Um, and as the wonderful women who preceded me spoke, there really is a great need across our state for affordable housing, but it is a painful need in these areas where we have the reservation. Um, I appreciate that you don't want presentations, so I just have a few more comments. And I also appreciate the great job the staff did in vetting all the applications in front of them. I know it's not easy. We um, are the only project in South Central and Southeastern Montana, and I'm sure you're aware of that. I feel that when we've been here before, you've really listened to the unique characteristics of our project, which is that we're not only <coughs> providing affordable housing, but also providing an immense amount of wraparound services so that we can help people move out of poverty and violence and into a better life. Um, no, you probably not. recall that we've had people in front of you before giving public comment, including uh, Tom Hanel, Mayor of Billings, and board members, and Lucy Brown of the Billings Housing Authority, and so forth. 
they all wished that I expressed to you that they wished they could be here today. Um, many of them had other things that they had to be doing. Um, so I'm just reminding you that we have had great public support. The breaking news in our project is that last month, um, our application to federal home loan banks for $500,000 was approved. So with low-income housing tax credits, we are truly shovel-ready. We own the land, the plans are done, um, Mountain Plains Equity Group has all the ducks in a row, and with um, that award, that $500,000, we are really able to close the gap and solidly move forward. So we're ready to do that, um, and we really appreciate all that you're doing to try to spread the tax credits as far as you can, uh, especially considering the new circumstances. If you have any questions that Mountain Plains Equity Group or I can answer, we'd be happy to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any additional comments on the Gateway Vista? Okay, next is Blackfeet 6 in Browning, and that's a family project with 30 units. Good morning, board. Thank you for the opportunity. What I have is a, a letter of support from our Blackfeet Tribal Council. The Blackfeet Tribal Council is in full support of the proposed Blackfeet Home 6 tax credit project in which 30 new single family homes will be constructed in Browning, Montana. The project is consistent with the housing and development goals of the tribe and its housing authority. Council has seen an increasing need for and support by families for the tribe to undertake a new housing project. With the proposed Blackfeet Home 6 project, Blackfeet Housing will continue to address the needs of our families by providing additional safe, decent, and affordable housing, furthering its mission to serve as our community's only housing provider. Over the years, Blackfeet Tribe has conveyed to MBOH the dire need for housing, renovation, and construction on the reservation. As you know, Blackfeet Housing maintains a long waiting list of individuals and families in need of housing. Many of our families live with relatives in severely overcrowded housing conditions and just as many live in housing that lacks adequate facilities and complete plumbing. It is undeniably the case that without adequate housing, <clears throat> housing parents are unable to provide the stable, secure foundation necessary for their children to succeed in school and in life. The unfortunate consequence to our community is that our needs severely impede our goals for improving conditions on the reservation. By utilizing the LIHTC program, the tribe and Blackfeet Housing will be able to maximize our limited resources to create significant change and improvement in our community. Without the equity generated by the tax credits, we will not be able to develop a project the size of Blackfeet Home 6. There is no other entity, group, or developer in our area that will come to our reservation and build housing that we need. Without leveraging assistance from the tax credit program, we simply do not have sufficient funds to build enough housing units to meet our needs. We fully support the development of Blackfeet Home 6, and we appreciate your efforts to assist our community in this regards. Sincerely, the Blackfeet Tribe of the Blackfeet Nation. And on a personal, for me, I'd just like to close with these thoughts. 263, that's the number of families on our waiting list right now today. 30, that's the number of families that you have the potential to change their lives. 30 to 40, a project this size creates 30 to 40 jobs in an area where unemployment does, it is at an all-time high for us. It's an opportunity to change our community for the positive. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.
there additional public comment on Black Feet 6? Okay, next we have Livingston Memorial Hospital in Livingston. Um, it's an acquisition rehab, well, it's acquisition, new construction, excuse me, acquisition, new construction, family project, um, and 35 units. Good morning. Steve Caldwell, Steve Caldwell representing the Park County Commission. Um, all of our members are here today in support of the Livingston Project. And uh, we also provided a commission letter of support, which I believe you now have. Um, as you know from the application packet, um, Livingston has a serious housing shortage and a serious shortage of affordable housing. Um, this shortage is affecting our labor markets. It's also providing um, ad, ad, <coughs> Excuse me, adverse effects to our economic climate. Um, this is an adaptive reuse of an existing single story facility, um, cost effective project uh, in a welcome neighborhood. And uh, we believe that it meets a number of community needs, which I believe are outlined in the packet as well. So uh, I believe Livingston was last given a tax credit award in 2002. And we hope you'll uh, consider an award for this project um, this year. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Heather and I'm with uh, Park County Public Health. And I do a ton of home visiting with families with my job. And um, as everybody out there probably knows, it's, it's super sad what some of these families go through. And it's really hard to break the cycle of poverty when people do not have adequate housing. And in Livingston, I think we have a unique situation because Bozeman has um, pushed over people because our community is a little bit more affordable than theirs. Um, so we have Bozeman people moving over. We're also a tourist town that has a ton of VRBOs that often sit empty in the winter time um, and, and people use for VRBOs in the summer. And another thing that I feel like um, that oftentimes isn't in our data is that we are right next to Yellowstone. We have a huge transient population of seasonal workers in and out. So we just have this interesting flux of um, major housing shortage. I see families living in cinder block shacks, um, trailers with broken windows. And again, um, my my job as in public health is to try to help these families and break the cycle of poverty. And I can help them with food. I can help them with clothing. clothing. Oftentimes, I can get them transportation. But as soon as people say they have a housing need, my heart drops. and really. Um, we have such a need. People are waiting a number of months to get housing. When people are homeless, it's sad to say, but the but when they say they come from a home of domestic abuse or they have an addiction problem, I can help them with transitional housing. I can get them into um, our domestic shelter or I can get them into our recovery house. But for the normal person there that has housing issues, there's no transitional housing while they're waiting. Um, we have a number of homeless youth in our community. We also have a number of homeless families living in cars that I deal with. Uh, oftentimes, we can send them over to Bozeman because they have a homeless shelter. We don't have one in Livingston, but with them going over to Bozeman, they um, pretty much cut off all their ties to local resources that they're working with. So they miss local appointments. Um, on all these things, all these services they're trying to keep going for themselves as soon as they go to Bozeman for the warming shelter. And our proposed area that we um, are looking at for low-income housing is in a great neighborhood, um, and I think it can give these families a lot of hope and chance. Um, so thanks for listening to our place. Thank you. Hello, my name is Katie Weaver. Um, as I said earlier, I am Montana State University Extension Agent. Um, my position is a partnership between the City of Livingston, Park County, and MSU. I do economic and community development for both Livingston and Park County. 
Um, as you've heard mentioned, housing needs have been challenging in Livingston and Park County um, for some time, and it's really moved into a crisis in the last several years. We're sandwiched between one of the fastest growing counties in the country, and as Yellowstone continues to see record uh, visitation, pressure has also come up from Gardner and um, just folks coming in and our economy growing around that, that tourism industry. Um, that said, it's also our largest area um, sector of employment are folks who work in services, and those are the folks that would qualify for this project. So while this is an affordable housing project, it's also very much workforce housing in Livingston. And truly from that economic development perspective, um, it's, it's pretty critical. And we have a lot of folks coming together um, in the community, many of them here working on these, these challenges right now across the board. When I began my position, it's been about three and a half years, um, folks are always interested in Livingston. It's a beautiful little community, very intact. Um, lots we're often grouped together with Bozeman because of our proximity, but Livingston is very much um, a standalone community. And um, as folks are looking to maybe relocate their business or start a business in Livingston, three years ago the conversation was how are we going to get a skilled workforce? And the first question out of their mouth now are where are the folks that I need to employ going to live? Um, so it, it's limiting our ability for growth. Um, and I, we see this as an opportunity, and we're excited for you to consider this project. So thank you. Thank you. Hello, and thank you. My name is Michael Wojtelak. I'm the president of the Park County Board of Realtors. I'm also a broker at Maverick Realty. And the evidence that I want to provide for your consideration today is that uh, Maverick Realty is the largest property manager in Park County. We manage over 220 residential units. We have very low vacancy rates. And over the last couple of years, we have seen a dramatic increase in the amount of applicants seeking affordable housing. And what I mean by that is we talk about this median income. Um, most of our applicants, a lot of our applicants seeking housing um, seldomly reach that mark of median income. There are usually some percentage thereof. Um, we've got people coming from the Gallatin area. We've got people coming from out of state. Um, and uh, the need is great. And this project is very well suited to satisfy some of that need. Um, 35 additional units, all guaranteed to be rented at some percentage of the median income, would greatly reduce the demand that uh, Park County is is in need of right now. So please um, give your consideration to this project and I, I suggest full funding. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. I'm not tall enough. I got it. I got it. Uh, good morning. Thanks for uh, your time this morning, and thanks for your consideration of all the requests before you. Um, as always, this is a difficult decision process for everyone. As you can hear from all the comment this morning, that um, the needs are great and varied across the state, and there's no shortage of need anywhere. Uh, my name is Heather Grenier, and I'm with HRDC in Bozeman and partnering with Homeward on this opportunity for housing in Livingston, something we're very excited to be able to be part of. And I just wanted to speak quickly about um, sort of reinforcing everything that you've already heard from members of the Park County or Livingston community this morning as far as it's not only a housing issue, it's become an economic development issue, a workforce issue. Um, we've had public support um, from the City of Livingston, the um, Park County Commission, the Chamber of Commerce, the Hospital Board, um, kind of across the gamut there has been large support for this project. Um, we've had a couple of community charrettes hosted by Homeward where those members of the community are there and participating and actively involved and engaged um, and very much want this to happen. The housing stock in Livingston is predominantly single family and, and older housing. There's not a lot of multifamily projects in Livingston. So this is a great opportunity um, 
and close to services. Um, and as partnering with HRDC, we can help to provide with the other members of the community those wraparound services that are so important to the project being successful. So thank you for your time. I'll turn it over to Heather. Good morning, board and staff. Of course, uh, I never envy you this decision-making round in this meeting, so there are a lot of good projects. I just want to speak to the high points of the project, uh, give you guys an update on our tax credit pricing and where we sit. Um, the Livingston project, um, it was a unique opportunity for us and we came forward because the uh, hospital building became available. Um, it was an option to convert it to a senior property, a family property, you know, a mixed kind of uh, approach to the housing and uh, workforce housing. So we, we dove in. Um, the, the project has been, everything's been recycled out of it. It's ready for housing. It's been secured for the winter um, and the opportunity is there. There's a huge market demand. People who, from the community and that work in the community have already spoken to that. But really, I just wanted, the vacancy rates are low. Um, Bozeman does have an impact. I will echo the fact that our Larkspur Commons in partnership with GMD, uh, we're leasing buildings as they become available in days and weeks, not months. Um, so there is a huge demand in Gallatin County, and it does have an impact on Livingston. I will say that from a tax credit standpoint, um, Every investor we've talked to has uh, said, you know, put on your, uh, uh, be ready for the roller coaster uh, because it's going to be, it's not pretty. Um, the banks uh, out there are, are all reacting differently, the investors. Uh, we've been really pr trying to problem solve this over the last three to four weeks um, with everything that's happening. And we, while we still have a strong support from U.S. Bank, there's a little bit of an unknown. Um, we have located a partner that closed a fund days ago, um, last week. And uh, they're about the low to mid-range 90s pricing, um, and they're going to hold that if we can close quickly. And we believe both Livingston and uh, the Meadows Project, which we'll speak to next, uh, have a, are lined up ideally for that fund um, with that investor. Uh, we are also have the opportunity, we have put in our letters of intent with uh, letters of interest for the housing trust fund as well as home funds. So after today, we will be focused on adjusting our performas and putting those applications forward. And we also um, have made the uh, Federal Home Loan Bank uh, AHP uh, staff aware of these projects. And uh, we will be tailoring and approach uh, all of those uh, sources with appropriate asks um, for the scale and the need depending on the community. Uh, but we do feel confident that uh, with this project, its market, and the demand that we are going to be able to close with a different pricing than what we had in our application, but we'll all have to work together to figure these out. So um, we're confident and we're going to continue to work in that direction. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mike Inman, Director of Planning for Park County. Um, and not to reiterate too much what's been said, but wanted to let you guys know that uh, Park County over the last year has been updating their growth policy. Um, it's been a very extensive process. We have a draft that was recommended by the Planning Development Board to the Park County Commission. We're in our final stages of public comment. Um, we did go out and meet with every community, Cook City, uh, Silvergate, Gardner, all the way through Immigrant Livingston, Wilsell, Clyde Park. And one of the predominant uh, issues and concerns in this go-around was affordable housing and the lack thereof. And it kind of relates to the growth that we're seeing in uh, Gallatin County and the spillover combined with Yellowstone National Park. And a lot of the economic opportunities that people see with the tourism industry, um, Airbnb, vacation rentals, um, those types of accommodations that are springing up all over Park County um, and therefore diminishing uh, affordable housing in, in that area. So in working with the city planner and other communities, just want you to understand that this has become a kind of focal point for uh, discussions and concern in our area. Um, so respectfully, thank you for your consideration and uh, good luck with your decision. Thank you. Is there any additional public comment on the Livingston Memorial Hospital? Yes, yeah, so this is uh, Brian Loeb, the CEO of Livingston Healthcare, and uh, I apologize for not being there in person, but I would like to uh, give comments. 
uh, just to echo the uh, comments of, of other supporters. Uh, as you heard from their comments, uh, I believe that the, uh, the community support uh, for this affordable housing is, uh, is wide and deep. Um, uh, first, I believe that uh, this project is unique in its uh, environmental stewardship uh, because of its uh, repurposing, uh, reuse, and, and recycling of an existing uh, community asset in the old hospital that has uh, that did serve the uh, community well for for over uh, 60 years. Um, there is a a great uh, workforce and, and economic development need. A Livingston Healthcare is the largest uh, employer in the county, and we have faced uh, uh, multiple um, workforce challenges the, the past uh, few years. Uh, namely, uh, within the last year and a half, our healthcare services uh, have grown 20%, and, and that growth has occurred in order to meet the needs of, of our, our growing community. Uh, but there have been a lot of uh, restrictions to that, that growth, and, and most of those have been in the workforce uh, arena. Uh, we've had uh, multiple employees that have had to uh, leave, leave this area because of the inability to uh, find affordable housing. Uh, one employee uh, which works in our environmental services um, and she was uh, actually shedding tears as she, she left. She had been working here over a decade and, and got uh, uh, evicted out of her house for a vacation rental and could not find uh, alternative affordable housing, so I had to uh, move to another state, uh, even though she did not uh, want to. Um, and it's also the lack of affordable housing has been the difference in in recruitment for, for multiple candidates as we try to fill open positions. Um, many have wanted to take those positions, but because of, again, lack of affordable housing have been unable to uh, make the move and, and compete and commit to employment with us. And so I strongly support uh, this project. Uh, I believe it will uh, create uh, economic uh, development and growth um, in this area and uh, meet the needs of an existing workforce. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Any other comments on Livingston Memorial Hospital? And I believe uh, Ingrid Fireman is one of the board members is now on the line too. Welcome, Ingrid. Okay, next we have the Meadows in Lewistown. That's a senior project, acquisition rehab, 35 units. Good morning to all and thank you for the opportunity. I come from the Meadows in Lewistown. This is a personal plea from myself. Without the Meadows, my wife and I would be in some serious trouble at the moment. It was a very nice gift, if you will, to find that there is a place in Lewistown where there is affordable senior living. It's an awesome complex. It's been there since the 70s. And of course, we all know that after 30 or so years of living in your house or your apartment, there are just things that need to be refurbished. 
including some folks like myself. But I do honestly appreciate whomever shall be awarded a grant. All of us and all of you are trying to help a neighbor and a friend. And I just want to say thanks. I I love it. It's a good place to be. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, she says I can stand right here. And there again, I want to thank all of you for letting us come in and talk to you. I moved into the meadow the 4th of July, 2008, fresh out of the hospital from Great Falls, and I could not walk without a walker. There was no place I could go that had steps. There are no steps. It's a comfortable apartment. It's warm in the winter. It's cool in the summer. The creek runs right by my living room, bedroom. I love it there. I plan on staying until I'm 100, unless it falls down around our ears. We do need some help. Roofing and sidewalks, it's, yeah, it needs a lot of help. And I thank you all for considering the matter was in Lewistown. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Beverly Kinkler. Um, I live in the Meadows, also in Lewistown, and um, I sort of relate myself and the others who live there. Um, we are all getting a few years on us. We need a facelift, and we need some new parts, uh, but it's a great place to live. Uh, it's one of only two senior housing Places in Lewistown for us seniors. Uh, we do need quite a bit of help. We have a roof that is now leaking in a couple of the units, and we certainly would like to have that fixed. We don't. We don't need the walls and the floors in the units. We don't need the mold problem. Um, it needs to be fixed, needs to be replaced. Um, we would like to have some new storm and screen doors. Uh, we need sidewalks. Uh, facelift to the kitchens and bathrooms would be wonderful. But there again, it is a wonderful place to live. The people are so friendly. Our manager is <laughs> Excellent. And I just thank you for the opportunity to live there, and we would greatly, greatly appreciate any help that we could get. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nikki Phillips. I'm actually the property manager there. I also have a personal interest in the property. I have a cousin that has lived there for 30 years. My aunt lives there. My son lives there, and my mother lives there until she recently passed away. My cousin and my son are disabled, and um, it is one of the two places, like Beverly said, that's in town that's for senior citizens and the disabled. And one of the great things about the Meadows is that um, the senior citizen portion are so good to the disabled. The disabled people there feel welcome, they feel safe, and as a mother of a disabled person, that is a huge thing. And there's not a lot of places where the disabled can feel as welcome. So the Meadows is really important, not just as senior citizens, because a lot of them have moved from their own home to the Meadows, and they don't want to have to go anyplace else. And so they're living in the Meadows. They want to stay there. But they also acknowledge that there is some things that need to be fixed. The property is 38 years old. It needs some fixing. We all acknowledge that, but nobody wants to move away from their home. They like it there. There's such a great sense of community there. Everybody looks out for everybody, and we would really appreciate being awarded this. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ken Mortimer, Ken Mortimer from Tucson Tally, and I just want to say thanks again for considering our application for a second year. Um, we really appreciate uh, the consideration. Thank you. Hi again, Heather from Homeward. Um, this is the second year in a row you've seen this project. Um, you can tell why we're a bit tenacious about bringing this to the board. Um, you've met at least eight to nine residents. I think you had a song at the original presentation. Um, the reason that we keep at it is that this project is a community. It is We can't create that. It's already there. Um, they're a family and they take care of each other and they are so fierce about taking care of each other and this property. Um, it's just infectious. So we're still sitting at the table. We're working with Peace and Alley, and uh, the project is of utmost importance to this community. And when I say this community, it's not just Lewistown, it's not just Fergus County. It is a five to six county radius. Lewistown, Montana is in the heart of Montana. There are no large communities within that area, and a lot of senior responses, when they can't be in their own homes anymore, they have to go to Billings or Great Falls or Kalispell. This Meadows project is very unique. They can stay in their home, or at least in go from Roy to Lewistown, which is a little better stretch than Roy to Billings. Just saying. But what most, what's most important is um, kind of the meat and potatoes behind this project. There's a 100% HUD contract. The reason that the project runs well is that that subsidy, that contract, would be preserved through this uh, preservation and act rehab. The tax credits would help build the strength in the walls and the energy and um, resources, all of the above, uh, and preserve it for another uh, 50 years. And I think it's very important to uh, just address from that standpoint that that's also another reason that our tax credit equity is safer than others per se, is that the 100% HUD contract is very attractive, um, as well as uh, the markets and the projects that we're presenting today. And from a capacity standpoint, Homeward is partnering with the right people because they know their communities. Meadows is an existing owner and they want to make sure it's handled in the right way. So we are going to use our capacity wisely to make sure these projects that are on the extreme end of the spectrum of type of projects you're looking at today are successful one way or another. So if you have any questions, please let me know um, and we're here to answer. That's probably better fit for our helpline. Would you call up to Gateway and have her talk to somebody on the helpline? Yeah, or yeah, just calling up to the Gateway office and having her talk. If you to are on the phone, if you would please hit star two to mute your phone, uh, we're hearing somebody so else's conversation. Most of you know the um, Rockcrest application is a little different than what we've seen in the past. <laughs> there were some underwriting challenges and the board was um, notified about some concerns. Um, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to read a, a memo that we sent to the board. Um, yesterday, I believe. Um, there have been significant developments since <coughs> um, <coughs> Greg wrote and I sent the memorandum to the uh, on Friday regarding Rockcrest housing credit application. After I, after Mary, myself, advised the applicant of the issues, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, <clears throat> the applicant was able to call her attention to items and information submitted in the application that allow staff to underwrite the application in accordance with all the QAP requirements. Based upon this application information, Mary then revisited 
the application and was able to complete the underwriting of the 9% application without considering additional numbers from outside of the application. In light of these developments, the application met all QAP requirements and may be considered for an award of credits. So that re-underwriting was done this weekend. So some of these spreadsheets, thank you, some of these spreadsheets um, were not updated. So during the um, comment from the development team, they will update you on some of these numbers and their numbers are very close to where our numbers landed. So if there's comments for Rockcrest, I'm sorry, it is. My name is Brett Downey. I'm the president and CEO of the Great Falls Development Authority. We're the public-private economic development partnership that covers Great Falls and the surrounding region. Our partnership includes the uh, City of Great Falls, Cascade County, the Great Falls Chamber of Commerce, Great Falls College, MSU, and about 150 businesses, organizations, and agencies in Great Falls and the region. I just wanted to stress, I had a chance to meet some of you in earlier testimony, how important this project is from an economic standpoint. Uh, we need this to uh, provide quality housing uh, for uh, working families uh, in Great Falls. I, I want to rebut a letter you received from a small group of landlords. All of the studies that we're seeing still show a significant demand for uh, uh, affordable rental units in Great Falls, and that's what we're seeing on the ground. We've had studies by recent developers looking at uh, higher income uh, projects, that's what they're seeing, and that's what the city saw uh, when they updated uh, their housing study. So we see this as a, a very important project, it's an innovative project. Uh, we appreciate uh, all of your hard work, and uh, I'd be happy to uh, uh, answer any questions uh, in regards to the economic impact and, and need of it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good morning. This is the uh, Bob Kelly. I'm the mayor of Great Falls. I tried to do the hand holding thing on or hand raising thing on this call, but I just did. Could I put myself into the queue, please? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, you know, as mayor of Great Falls, I know you guys all have a difficult process, and uh, thank you for doing this, not only this morning, but your continuing work. And I'm glad to see that other people have difficult choices to make when it comes to granting uh, incentives and uh, for for projects around town. Much like Mr. Doney said from GFDA, this is a, a real economic uh, issue for Great Falls. As, you know, we've experienced a lot of uh, economic development up here that is being threatened to stall as our worker recruitment is kind of hindered by the uh, workforce housing like you've heard from other communities as well. I would add that we also have a kind of a unique driver to our uh, need for quality affordable housing and that is really uh, directives by the military uh, from the MANG and Montana Air National Guard and Malmstrom Air Force Base uh, letting us know that they are not satisfied with the options available for their airmen as they come in here and for their young families. Uh, so it's, it's an economic necessity for us in order to maintain the huge presence of Mounts from Air Force Base to be able to offer the different kinds of housing options that any community would need to do to satisfy uh, what their needs are. You know, Rockcrest is uh, positioned to be put into a growing area of our community and it's, uh, it's unique to have such a larger project on available property uh, that would help so many. Uh, the developer has an excellent reputation, and not only is this considered a great workforce project, but my phone rings constantly with folks who are in need of just, these are working people in Great Falls who are, are being shut out of decent, quality, affordable housing. The inventory just isn't there. So as well as the market rate structures that are going up, this project is a, is a huge necessity here, and, and as mayor, I'm just here to lend my support to the application and let you know that the community is behind this. Uh, we think it will be efficient and effective and, and as importantly, it will be sustainable. So I appreciate your time and, and really appreciate the hard work that you all do. Thank you. Good morning. 
<clears throat> My name is Neil Fortier with NeighborWorks Great Falls. If you recall a year ago, um, at the end of all of this, the uh, board challenged us as developers to think outside the box, approach a project in a different way. So we did that. And so we bring to you a very unique project in that it combines 4% and 9% tax credits. And because of the uniqueness of this project, it's been challenging, to say the least. Um, we really appreciate all the work that staff has, has done on this uh, underwriting this project. But I do want to make uh, several points of clarification. You were all uh, distributed a comparative data by project sorted uh, spreadsheet. And if you use those numbers, um, it would eliminate our project from being uh, in uh, from being selected. But if you look at the project summary sheet that Mary had sent out, those numbers are more representative of what I'm going to share with you uh, right now. So if you look under debt service coverage ratio, uh, you look under year one for the nine percent application, that number would be 1.15. Year 15 would be 1.34. And then if you look at the entire project combined, the debt service coverage ratio is 1.21. So you can see a huge, significant difference there. Now if we go to the next uh, spreadsheet, uh, the cost per unit. Uh, currently, it shows 168963 The cost per unit for the entire project is $158,910. If we go to the next chart, cost per square foot, initially shown as $272.85. Combined project is $206.39. Credits per square foot. Here we see a substantial uh, difference uh, shown at $25.17. The actual credits per square foot for this project is $11.93. There's two more or three more numbers to share with you. Percentage paid by housing credits, shown as $88.32. That number is actually $59.07. Then if we move over to operating expenses per unit, shown as $6,000, and the actual is 3409 So again, a substantial difference between uh, actual and what was shown. Again, the project summary sheet that you received, uh, most of these numbers uh, came right off of that sheet. We also need to reference uh, soft costs. Uh, soft costs were shown at 33.33%. I believe I didn't write that number down. And uh, we believe there's an error in the spreadsheet, but the spreadsheet that was sent out to everyone doesn't show formulas. And so the total project costs do not include the site work or the uh, infrastructure, the roads going into that development. So when you include those costs into the project costs, our actual soft costs are 25.55%. So based upon all these numbers, we now fall within the project limitations, uh, well below the project limitations in most of these categories, in all these categories. With that, um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Steve uh, from GMD, uh, and he's going to talk a couple more numbers. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm Steve Demick with UMD Development, and uh, <clears throat> you can tell we're, we're a bit of a numbers geek crowd. 
Um, just kind of echoing what, uh, what Neil said, you know, this this project's unique. Uh, it was a bit of a square peg in a round hole, and <clears throat> you know, as far as the application is concerned, uh, we do give the staff huge, huge amount of credit and uh, for trying to accommodate this kind of a awkward awkward application in the uh, <clears throat> the UniApp, et cetera. And I think that was some of the results of some of the some of the numbers. Um, something I want to point out, and back to the like credits per square foot. <clears throat> you know, in terms of, I think what's attractive of this project is is the the leverage that we're getting from the nine percent credits. So, in the, as far as nine percent credits per square foot, <clears throat> we've calculated that, <clears throat> excuse me, to be seven seven point two four. So. By that metric, you know, as far as illustrating the leverage of the 9% credits, I mean, this is, this request is more than basically twice the leverage for the same amount of credits. Um, <clears throat> another metric is the percent paid, paid by housing credits. If we're just, if we just include the 9% credits, which is the, you know, limited supply <clears throat> of the entire project, 33% is paid by 9% credits. So I think it's another metric that kind of illustrates the, the huge amount of leverage that we're able to employ with these 9% credits, combining them with the 4% credits. Um, <clears throat> you know, just finally, the, the, I guess the point we want to make sure everyone understands is the 4%, 9% are completely dependent on each other. It's not like we could take an allocation of 9% credits and go build 41 units. It, it's not possible. Uh, so we think that's why we think it's very important to look at the overall project combined uh, and what we're able to <clears throat> achieve and the leverage we're able to achieve uh, with that mechanism. <clears throat> so those are just the two points I wanted to make. Um, any questions? Happy, <coughs> happy to answer them. Thank you. Any additional comments on Rock, Rock Chris comments? Right. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's all of the projects that were invited forward. And I would like to request a break before we move into um, your discussion, if that would be okay. Yes. Why don't we take a We'll take a ten minute ten minute break or so till about ten fifteen. So we have but wait just a second, guys. Please. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. I knew that was gonna be slightly awkward. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if you would entertain me. Um it's my great honor to present this token of appreciation to our chairman, JP Crowley. Um, as many of you know, JP has been on our board since 2005, and he's been the chair since 2007. And to give you any idea of what has happened in the last 10 years that JP has been has been chair, this this board has actually leveraged over 746 million dollars in the state of Montana, making a significant impact and difference in the lives of Montanans, hundreds of thousands of Montanans, and generation after generation of Montanans. So I wanted to give this uh, little token of our appreciation and say thank you, JP, for your service, for your leadership, for your sense of humor, and your constant persistence and energy to continue forward in providing affordable housing and for helping us all contribute to making a difference in Montana. Thank you. Before we take a break, I guess I'll just quickly say today is my last day on the Montana Board of Housing. Um, it's been a very wonderful 12 years, um, great 10 years of being chairman, and I'm really proud of all the work that everybody in this room does, and the staff, and the board, and really the work that all the developers in the state have done. It's been really amazing. Um, so thank you for everything you do, and thank you for making my time here fun. And it's been a good time to 
move on to something else. And I'm actually moving out of the country, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, not because not because of the election. Um, <laughs> uh, just happenstance that uh, my wife got an amazing job um, in Australia, so we're moving next month. But um, my 12 years at Montana Board of Housing have been really amazing. And so thank you all for making it great. And, and now we can take a break. Okay, Catherine. Catherine, you're about two hours late for school. I'd like you to get up and get dressed. It's 9.15. Could you get up and get dressed? Uh, Ma'am, you're on the speakerphone. The world's hearing you talk to your kid. But we understand.
Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on the call. Um, I can't. I can't get on. Can't get I so I can't get on, but I do. I am on the phone, and I have the packet. So I'm looking at um, the um, Blackfeet program, their project. Uh, I want to go for that one, and I also want to go for the Roosevelt Villas and the Gateway Vista. Okay, so we only have twenty seven twenty seconds away. Okay, so you're not. I like the um, rock press either. Okay. me before we start the voting. Thank you. Remember. Well, because I mean, I just I should be there at this meeting. Like, are you gonna be? Um, I can't get on to the webinar because. 
have a firewall. The state has a firewall against it. To get on the webinar, so I just have to. The other board members, where are you at? And I'm like, I'm here. I just can't get there. I can't, I can't get on the webinar. So it looks like, well, I did one. Well, I came here when I said, Now they're all walking around feeding If we can have everybody start to get their take their seats again, we'll get moving.
Okay, everyone. We'll, we'll go ahead and get started here. While Penny gets back, oh, there she is on that spreadsheet. So you'll notice that there's pricing adjustments on here, um, and that is to hopefully help address the fluctuations in the market. So when we had the meeting, I don't remember if it was November or December, but we had a meeting, or maybe, anyway, I don't remember when it was, but we talked about, Alex brought this up, and I <clears throat> suggested that staff would do um, Additional underwriting and do an, a pricing adjustment up to 10%. So some of these are capped at 10%. So some of the smaller ones, um, the 580, uh, 5,840,000, the pricing adjustment is 584,000. That's a 10% number. You'll see that the one right above it <coughs> is way less than 10%. That's because <coughs> when it gets to the 6,775, that is the, it, the cap for the 25% that each project can get. And the same thing happened to um, Roosevelt Villa. That amount looks really small because that um, hits the small project cap. Does that make sense to everybody? So Penny will um, put in these as you make decisions so and you'll be able to see your total going down <coughs> so you know how much you have left as you go through these. And board members, in the in our packet, page 10, um, if we are going to add the pricing adjustment in, um, there is the proposed motion language so that page 10. Um, and that will allow us to make sure all of the the verbiage is correct and that the those uh, pricing adjustments are part of the motion. Do we want somebody to read that motion first so everybody understands what it is? Can we put it up on the So it's which page? Page 10 on the document. <clears throat> proposed, proposed motions. There you go. So the part on, on developers' parts, um, that those awards will be contingent upon submission of new um, UNIAP adjusted, <clears throat> adjusting only the sources and uses to address the project funding gap and to provide supplemental documentation for the project as determined necessary by MBOH staff to determine that the project is financially feasible. And there's some examples there of that. saying yes, that's correct. <clears throat> yes, uh, that's correct. Um, motion one would would be used for those projects that are selected to receive right. an award. And, and as Mary's pointed out, all of those would be contingent on the submission of the additional or adjusted sources and uses um, to take into account this this drop in market pricing for the credits. And then once you selected those projects, the idea is to rank the remaining projects because, because of the uncertainty in the market. If some of those selected projects are not able to move forward, that would allow staff to go ahead 
and move forward with another project in order without having to come back. Any other questions for Mary? Yes, Bob. Well, not so much a question, but um, again, uh, you know, we are faced today with um, some very, very, very tough decisions. I, I wish we could fund every single one of these projects. I see merit. I see the work. I see the need. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, we, it's not falling on deaf ears. A lot of the support that is expressed in letters that I see as I look through the file, through testimony here, uh, I think should also be rallied up to talk to our, our legislature. We're one of the few states that are not giving any support to affordable housing. And I'm telling you, and, and some of you we heard this morning, if we don't have affordable housing, we will not have economic growth. It is, it is hand in hand. It should be bipartisan. So it's frustrating to me to see uh, any attempts to uh, raise that bar and to have a, an honest discussion, and, and this is going to be a tough legislature, but tax credits alone can't do it. I'm just telling you, tax credits alone can't do it, and if, if you guys don't uh, talk to your legislator, I don't care what side of the aisle they're on, uh, we're going to be here every every time, and some are going to be leaving with tears in their eyes because the projects are going to really make a human difference in people and a negative impact. So. Um, uh, with that, congratulations on really some fabulous work. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Pat. I have a question for Mary. Mary, are you now comfortable with the numbers uh, relative to Rock Press? Yes, and the numbers that Neil presented are very similar to the numbers that we came up with at the end of the day. Thank uh, you. Mr. Chairman, um, I would move that the proposed motion one be adopted and as we go through and approve projects within the limitations of what we have available that those figures then just be put into that. Motion to adopt proposed motion one. Uh, second. Bob, what I've suggested, we adopt proposed motion one, and as we uh, allocate credits for the projects within the limitation of what we have available, that those that project and those numbers be plugged into the motion. So the motion's already to go. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any any comments or questions? Any public comment? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And is Doug or Ingrid on the on the line? Okay. Motion passes. So from here we will I'll entertain motions for individual projects that as to whether or not to approve, Mr. Chairman? I propose um, a, a motion to approve 2017 housing credits to the Blackfeet project in the amount of $6.7 million, as well as an additional amount of $75,000. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for the Blackfeet 6 housing. Is there any questions or comments from board members? Mr. Chairman, just a further con uh, comment. Uh, I was impressed by their their very low soft costs, uh, their low operating costs, and the opportunity for home ownership. Is there any public comment? And Paulo, can we do a roll call vote for each of these, please? Bob? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Pat? Yes. Shayla? Sorry. JP? Yes. Motion carries 4-0. Mr. Chairman.
I would like to move to approve and award 2017 housing credits to Polson Landing um, in the amount of six million one hundred and seventy fifty thousand. Um, and the Mount you know, Mary is I don't have that number. In and with the additional amount that you have. Six hundred and fifteen thousand. Six hundred and fifteen thousand. Sure, ten percent. Okay, motion was made. Do we have a second? I'll second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I um, look and um, appreciate the numbers, the uh, whether it's the square footage cost, uh, cost per unit, um, the longevity that they're back again. Um, I appreciated um, um, the city planner today, Kyle, talking about calling people and about the vacancy rates and those that are not available in Polson, I am aware of the amount of growth that is going on in that Lake City and uh, think that this award is, uh, has merit. Is there any additional comments? And any public comment? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Bob? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Pat? Yes. JP? Yes. Motion carries 4 0. Mr. Chairman, I'd like okay. to move that uh, we allocate 2017 uh, tax credits to Rockcrest. Um, I, don't, I don't think I have to repeat the numbers. I'll second that motion. Mr. Chairman, yeah, I recognize that this is a, an award in the Great Falls uh, area. Uh, and with that we have done several projects over there in the last few years. But uh, this is an innovative approach that makes our tax credits go a lot further than uh, they have in the past. And I want, uh, well, I personally would like to see this project approved to encourage other developers to um, take the same approach. Any other comments? Any public comment? Online digital conference center. Please enter your conference room number followed by the pound or hash sign. Pat? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Pat? Yes. JP? Yes. Incorrect. Motion carries 4 0. You enter Mr. Chairman? Yes. Seven. Or, uh, sorry. Oh, no, I, I, well, I'm ready to make another recommendation. Let's go. Uh, I make a motion. Propose a motion to award 17 credits to Gateway Vista. Uh, I think they're approaching and dealing with a unique set of problems there. I like their approach. Uh, we all know the need, and uh, uh, they've been here more than once. So, with that, um, and, and, the, and the demographics and billings have not yet quite caught up. So, I, I feel comfortable with that recommendation. We have a second. Any comments on Gateway Vista? This conference will now be recorded for a menu Public comment for Gateway Vista. Bob? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Pat? Yes. yes. JP? Yes. Motion passes 4-0, and just like every year for the past 12, <clears throat> we are running out of money. So you have a you have a project in a small rural pool, um, but you're coming up short on the money. Um, I yeah. <clears throat> the um, consider whether you want to put developers on the spot. On an amount. This one actually. Developers on the spot and asking them if they can change a project today that the. Maybe you might want unfair. to consider that, yeah, that might be unfair. Uh, you may want to consider that we hold those pro projects for a second round or that money for a second round or hold it. Um, for the original ask, you're off 
about 195,000. You're Mr. off Chairman, about 95,000. Mr. Chairman, yes, rather than do that, I would uh, make a motion that we approve what credits are left, uh, allocate them to uh, Roosevelt Villas. Second. Okay. Um, is there any other comments from board members? Any public comment? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Motion has been made to award the remaining credits to Roosevelt Villas. Um, Paul, would you do a roll call, please? Bob? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Pat? Yes. JP? Yes. That was like the lightning round of tax credits. So unfortunately, um, not everyone is able to receive funding. Um, I do want to say that, and I think I, I've probably said this 10 years in a row, that I'm really impressed with the quality of projects that come forward to us every single year. And if there was any way to fund every one of them, I'm sure we would. Um, and those that did not get funded, I hope that there's some contingency plans that you can make so that you can come back to us next year. And because there's every single one of these has been a very worthy project. Mary? You, <clears throat> on the multifamily update, you received a dashboard. Um, there, there are some updates on the development side of it um, that I'm sure you've taken a look at. Um, we have filled the position that Todd vacated to move over to the public relations uh, area. Mary, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, we had the last the motion number two, and we oh. were going to rank the I, remaining projects. Sorry. It's one of those days. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> so under proposed motion two, there are three... I believe three remaining projects that if we would care to rank them, if any of the previous ones are unable to go forward, it, this would allow the board staff to automatically award the credits to the next project in line. Yes, sir. As I sit here new to this process and for the past two years, both Wolf Point projects have been underfunded, not by the, the, the board, but simply by the fact that we have limited um, money out there. I, I, I would ask to make a request to the board that um, Yellowstone Villas be considered on the ranking system since it, it has already been voted to be funded, to be allowed, if there is any available money, um, to be the first one in, in line to fully fund our our own projects. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for that comment. A good point, Mr. Chairman. I would move in the ranking system that uh, project, the first project be the balance of the credits requested for Roosevelt Villas. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with permission, could we word that just a little differently so that if any of the projects create, uh, need less credits than they've been awarded that they would go towards that project? Uh, yes, before before the you need the ranking for priorities. Yes, the pricing adjustment. Because there is some there is some question if all of the additional will be required. It may in fact fund it. Let's say if we rank it as first priority, if those funds are needed um, after everybody has reviewed and come back to the staff.
Do we have a second? I know staff can figure that motion out. I'll second Pat's motion. Okay, just to be clear, any re remaining funds after your reevaluation um, would be first applied towards the Yellowstone Villas before any other ranked project. Correct, and I, we have <coughs> Yellowstone Villas and Roosevelt Villas are the same thing, just for clarification. Mr. Chairman, um, if we're looking for a project following that one, uh, I would recommend Livingston. Um, let's. What, we should vote on the first project first. So, any any fi final comments on uh, Roosevelt Villas? Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Paula. Pat. Yes. Jeanette. Yes. Bob. Yes. JP. Yes. So for another, following that, I would put the Livingston project next in line. I'll second. Is there any comments on Livingston Memorial Hospital being the second contingent award? Paula? Bob? Yeah. Jeanette? Yes. Pat? Yes. JP? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I'd recommend the second alternative be the Meadows. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded for the next contingent award, potential award to be the Meadows in Lewistown. Any final comments? Paula? Bob? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Pat? Yes. JP? Yes. And I would entertain one one last motion to place Aspen's place three in Butte as the final contingent award. Mr. Chairman, I would make that motion. Second. Okay. Any other comments? Paula? Bob? Yes. Jeanette? Yes. Pat? Yes. JP? Yes. So with, with that, we have successfully allocated, or potentially allocated, 10 million more money, dollars than we have. Okay, so back to the multifamily update, I think. Um, multifamily has a new employee. Um, we hired Ryan Culver. We stole him from Section 8 voucher. Ryan, are you still here? If you would stand up, please. You'll be seeing his. You'll be seeing his face. He's an amazing addition to our team. So, welcome, Great. Ryan. Welcome. And I think that's all that we have. Okay, that brings to close the multifamily portion, and we will move on with the finance program. For the record, um, Ginger Pancook, the finance manager with Montana Board of Housing, and you'll excuse my voice, I'm trying very hard not to lose it. Um, per the uh, vote at the last board meeting, we have moved forward with a transfer 
from Wells Fargo to Wellington Trust as our trans, uh, trustee. The transfer to our new single family trustee, Wellington, requires us to sign a cert certification that the board has resolved to certain issues. And in your packet is the uh, certification of authority. The staff is requesting that the board members formally approve this resolution. Mr. Chair. I'd like to move approval of resolution 17-0123-SF trustee to make the changes effective, um, or to make the changes approved at the last meeting. Second. Is there any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Um, just a quick update, we will be completing that transfer on Friday the 27th. Um, at this point, everything has moved forward fairly smoothly and should be completed on that date. Uh, the next uh, agenda item is the finance update, and I believe I have Mena Chu with RBC online, and I would uh, like to turn it over to her for an update on the market at this point. Mina, are you there? And to, un to unmute, just hit star two. Can you hear me? Yes. Can yes, you hear me? You. Oh, okay, great. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Uh, this is Mina Chu with RBC Capital Markets, uh, underwriter to the board's single family bond program. Um, <clears throat> we have, uh, the board has an expectation to price single family bonds um, in uh, mid February and to close in March. Uh, the bonds will be refunding uh, some prior bonds to take. Uh, advantage of lower interest rates plus uh, funding of new money to finance additional new single-family mortgages. Uh, last week, uh, housing starts in industrial production and jobless claims all came in um, stronger than expected um, and the market expectations are for the FOMC to raise rates uh, additionally several times this year. So in the environment of a uh, mortgage or interest rate, rising interest rate market, um, the board is uh, issuing new bonds once again to um, refinance prior bonds and to finance additional mortgages. And so we are expecting and hoping for a successful pricing um, next month. And that's just a, a quick market update from me. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Mina. Any questions for Mina? Only one. Are are there any? Is there anything going on that is making you nervous? <laughs> Our economists have been told to expect the unexpected. Um, there was uh, an executive action um, uh, on Friday, uh, the first day of the new presidency, to um, to reverse course on the FHA premiums. They were supposed to come down by 25 basis points uh, effective the end of January, and there's now. Uh, there was a reversal on that on Friday. So um, definitely a new administration with uh, new tax reform. Um, there's been some talk of possibly putting a cap on mortgage uh, interest deduction. Um, and there are definitely changes, obviously, for corporate taxes, which is uh, impacting the pricing on the tax credit equity market. So there are definite changes in the way. Uh, we're just not sure what they will be and how big a, an impact. Uh, clearly, tax reform being the most important in the tax-exempt market, 
uh, but additionally, um, corporate taxes, um, AMT versus non-AMT, uh, and GSE reform uh, effect on Fannie Mae and Jenny Mae. They're calling on more private partnerships uh, with and support of Fannie and Freddie, uh, and that's all great, just as long as Fannie and Jenny and Freddie are still there to support the housing market. Thank you. Thank you, Mina. <laughs> Thank you, Mina. Thank um, you. To continue the finance update uh, in your packets, you have uh, information on maturities and our diversity uh, in our, uh, our investments. And as you can see, a large percentage of our investments are still held in money market. That allows us to do uh, our operations. And at this point, we're doing bridging for the 2017 bond issue that Mina was talking about. Um, Vicki will also touch on that and let you know where we are with that. Um, a lot of our money is invested in short term. 26.3 will be available percent will be available in the next 12 month period. These funds are for um, arbitrage payments, debt service, and short term expenses. Um, the other maturity dates, we have taken advantage of some long term uh, higher yield rates. Although with the uh, roller coaster that we have going on in the uh, market right now, we're kind of going towards some of the shorter term to, to see what is going to be available uh, in the coming months as far as investments and hopefully be able to get into some higher rate investments and um, improve our portfolio. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Any questions for Ginger? Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good morning. The first item on the agenda for the homeownership program is a request to allow um, lenders to charge a maximum of $500 um, application underwriting processing whatever fee it is that they want to call it on their um, closing statement. Currently the board allows compensation to our lenders at 2.75 percent. Uh, One percent can be charged to the borrowers through the closing of the loan. The board purchases loans at 101 percent and then the board pays the 75 basis point SRP, a uh, service release premium. The, um, and they're not currently allowed to charge an application fee or an underwriting fee, or processing fee to the lenders in the closing. Um, the, with the cost of originating loans, it's increased quite considerably in 2016. The, um, a number of our lenders have gone through uh, transition in their software due to the TRID um, disclosure requirements that the CFPB put into place at the end of 2015 and also there's a huge quality control or compliance component in lending these days and the lenders are trying to cover the costs for that as well. We reviewed our MCC files which those loans have to qualify for board financing but they're sold to other investors and the um, borrowers are issued a mortgage credit certificate um, to use in conjunction with those loans. And we found that the average fee per file that the lender charges is about $750. We also, um, there's been a number of conversations with other states and regarding the fees that are allowed to be charged to a borrower in their lending programs and we discovered that um, a number of HFAs have started to allow or not restrict, in some cases not restricted at all, the amount of fees charged to the borrowers. So um, the staff requests that 
the language in our purchasing and servicing guide be changed to the section listed under the proposal where um, the all costs incurred by the mortgage mortgager in acquiring, acquiring a residence and obtaining a mortgage loan shall be reasonable and shall not exceed the usual costs incurred by a person acquiring like property where financing is not being provided by the board. Other costs which may not exceed usual and reasonable fees and charges include credit report fees, survey fees, appraisal fees, title fees, title insurance, legal fees, and other similar costs which are paid directly to third parties not controlled by the participating lender. Lender fees such as application fees, administrative fees, underwriting fees, processing fees, and document prep fees cannot exceed a total of $500. Mr. Chair? Yes. I'd move acceptance of the board of the staff recommendation regarding uh, lender fees to be charged to the borrower. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any comments or questions for Vicki? Well, just one comment and, and I'm when I saw this, you know, it's it's an it's another barrier a lot of times for first time home buyers because the fees always have to be paid as part of the down. And but I understand also, you know, we we need quality underwriters to be our partners and they have rising costs as well. And so I think this is a good balance. I mean, I think 500 is enough and it should by the looks of the example you gave on most cases be adequate, but it is a concern, you know, that the the original barrier continues to climb and for a lot of people uh, down payment and getting into the loan is still a significant challenge. And we, um, we've we had the discussion internally um, over the years as to whether or not fees should be allowed to be charged to the borrowers. I know when Nancy Leifer um, was in this position, we had discussions about it um, with the implementation of, like I said, TRID and compliance um, requirements that are now over the uh, origination process, um, we felt that a $500 fee um, allowance would be adequate to help compensate the lenders and cover the cost of doing the mortgages. Mr. Chair, um, I share Bob's concern about this. We deal with people all the time that are struggling to get into home ownership, and I, I know this is going to increase that barrier. On the other hand, we talk to lenders all the time whose compliance requirements have really, really changed. Um, a bit of the pendulum swinging perhaps so too far in, in the other direction, but I support this because I think it's a necessary compromise between the borrower and the lender. Thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda for home ownership was just a home ownership update. Um, I uh, prepared the home ownership dashboard and put that as part of your board packet. As you can see, um, we continue to get um, reservations in on most of the programs we have to offer. At the end of December, we had about $7.8 million worth of loans reserved in the 2017 um, for the 2017 program. I know your dashboard says 7.3, but the 7.8 also includes some 80% finance loans that have been reserved or had been reserved. Um, just as a up-to-date um, update on that production, um, we were working on the preliminary official statement last week, and as of Last Thursday, we actually had $9.9 .9 million uh, worth of loans reserved or purchased into the bridge for the new series. Um, the mortgage portfolio balance, you can see we had 5,187 loans um, on the books at the end of February. We did see um, kind of an influx of paid and full loans in November and December as interest rates fluctuated. Um, Hopefully, we won't see a lot of that continue, um, but things like this change, the $500 change in the lender fees, we hope to help ramp up on the production end of things. 
um, delinquency numbers are listed on the bottom of the dashboard there. Um, and then I also did want to say Janine Moss, I think you may have seen in your board packets for December, she did retire at the end of November. Um, we was a loss for the Board of Housing. She had worked for Board of Housing for a total of 25 years. Um, and I did just want to let you know that her position has been filled. Julie Hope, who has worked for the board for 10 years as a loan file review um, and purchaser. She will step into Janine's position and will be out to hire again for Julie's position then. So unless you have any questions for me, that concludes. Any questions for Vicki? Thank you. Thank you. Servicing update. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the board. Um, let's see, I have some servicing statistics. We have here for um, the total of portfolio loans, 4,687 has increased from last month and uh, also from April. And we have uh, Board of Housing loans, specifically the 4,375 and our BOI 295 and multifamily 17. <clears throat> our principal of all the loans are 423,109,000 and um, escrow about approximately 4.7 million. And our lost drafts uh, close to 900,000. Um, our delinquent loans are getting pretty steady right now. We have 178 over 60 days past due for the month of December. And our foreclosure totals, uh, 34 total for 2016. And 2015, we did have 44 foreclosures. So we had 10 less this year. And the um, actual foreclosures, we had three in December. And we had one in January. Um, and we expect to have only one in January. Uh, the delinquent contacts to make, these are our 20-day phone calls, any loan that's 20 days past due, we had 756 contacts to attempt twice in a week. Um, can be quite a bit of phone calls for, we have two, two um, early delinquency specialists that make these phone calls from the 17th to the 21st day of the month. Also, uh, late fees, we had 806 for December, uh, $23,088. Um, we've had 49 payoffs and 170 new loans, which out of the 170, 138 were transferred from Opportunity Bank of Montana. Um, let's see, we have started a quarterly servicing uh, newsletter called Mortgage Matters. Uh, it's been very educational and interactive, and I think our staff is really enjoying um, writing these newsletters up and, and sharing the knowledge. I think our 2017 goal is educating our borrowers um, the best we can, and I think this is a good start. Uh, loss mitigation. We have active uh, financial packets, 24, um, and that uh, says November above there, but that is for December. I apologize for that. Um, repayment plans and forbearances for December um, are 44, and that is a pretty average number. Um, that's staying pretty steady. Our HAMS and partial claims and mods that are pending are 17, which has also been staying pretty steady. Uh, preservation properties and REOs, uh, 24 to date, and we're hoping that decreases in the next few months. Um, chapter 13 bankruptcies, um, average of 15, seems to be pretty steady as well. So unless you had any other questions, that's what I have today. Two questions, please. Thank you for your great work, and I really like the newsletter. Thank uh, you. So question one is, who all gets the Mortgage Matters newsletter? And the second question is, can you explain preservation properties a little bit more to me? Yes. Uh, we do have a, uh, con a contact list in our Miami that um, Penny has set up, and it's anyone who has been on that list is getting our newsletter. And to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how many are on that list. Penny, do you know off the top of your head?
I think so. That could be about right. So, yeah. Me too. That's a good question. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good idea. And as far as preservation, um, preservation are properties that have been abandoned and we are preserving the property so it is in conveyance condition to the insurer. Um, and it, a lot of it has activities such as um, changing locks, um, shoveling snow, mowing lawns, um, winterizing when necessary, and things like that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good morning again. Um, I would like to present the, both the executive update and the operations update for you um, in conclusion of our meeting. Uh, Bruce is at the legislature now, and as you can see in the administrative dashboard, we have the briefing slides for which he prepared in advance um, and will be delivering today to the delegation. The last few months have been very busy. We've had, um, obviously, some staff changes, which are fantastic opportunities. Their growth opportunities, and we will be filling two positions, one in home ownership to replace Julie Hope, and one in Section 8 uh, for the contract manager position for which um, Ryan Culver moved to tax credits. And we're excited about those, those opportunities and about the staff movement. Um, we are preparing for the March board training, which, will, uh, which is on your calendar for a three-day training event. Um, we'll do some board governance training as well as some financial training, uh, Kutak Rock, and uh, as well as our financial advisors, Mina Chu and her team will be in Montana to provide board training for you as well. And um, we'll be excited about that. Our Rotunda Day in January went off very well with our partners. Um, it was a great opportunity to kick off the legislative session. Um, I've heard nothing but positive feedback from that adventure. And um, as you can see, we added some, some new material to our executive dashboard, which includes the wait list. Um, the, our administrative team was able, uh, were asked to pick up the wait list from the Section 8 area. Um, this information we've included in your dashboard because it gives you an idea of the folks who are still seeking housing and who are on the wait list by community with our community partners throughout the state. Do you have any questions? Any questions for Stacey? Mr. Chair, um, this is not a question, but it's a huge compliment to the Department of Commerce and the Board of Housing, the Housing Division, uh, for producing all that great chili for Housing Day at the Rotunda. It was amazing. The entire capital smells like chili. And we get a lot of visitors, and a lot of people have, have a chance to talk to legislators and legislative aides about the housing needs in Montana. So please thank all of your staff for their great work. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Penny? Anything today? Um. Any last comments? I would just like to say thank you for 12 years of fun sitting here and um, also thank you for the very very nice plaque and notebook and I will miss you all we are adjourned <laughs>